Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to see the common instruments that are used in pediatric practice. We will learn how to correctly identify these instruments and their common indications, contraindications as well. The reason we created this video was keeping the final year MBBS student in mind. What happens is that they, they usually don't get to work with these instruments. They are taught more of a theory. So in exam, where instruments is a small part of a big exam, they tend to uh, fumble with these instruments. They, they are not able to identify, not able to differentiate one needle from another needle. So at the end of these 20-30 minutes or so, you will be able to correctly identify the instruments, differentiate one instrument from another, and know what their indications, contraindications are. This is the lumbar puncture needle and once you remove the safety cap you can see the needle. Inside this needle is this well fitting stillet. The stillet is to be kept inside the needle when the lumbar puncture is being done. You can see a slot in the hub of the lumbar puncture needle where a projection from the stillet fits in. Now, what are the uses for this lumbar puncture needle? The lumbar puncture needle is used to collect CSF to analyze for infections. It can be bacterial, viral, fungal, look for infections. It can be used to look for bleedings like in subarachnoid hemorrhage. It can be used to look for malignant cells for albuminocytological disassociations in Guillain-Barre syndrome. It can be used for increased isolated gamma globulins in multiple sclerosis. It can be used to measure CSF pressure. It can be used to inject drugs into the spine. It can be anesthetic. It can be chemotherapeutic drug. It can be any other drug. It can also be used to inject dyes like in milograms to look for the flow of spinal CSF. The complications of lumbar puncture are a failed puncture, a traumatic puncture. It can lead to introduction of infection. There can be a post lumbar puncture headache. It can lead to mild back aches after the procedure. And in cases where there is raised ICT, it can lead to brainstem herniation, which is a very severe complication. The contraindications to a lumbar puncture are raised intracranial tension, skin infection near the puncture site, bleeding disorders, and a sick general condition of the patient. This is a bone marrow biopsy needle, and what you see here now is the stillet. It is to be inserted into the needle like this while performing the bone marrow biopsy. As you can see, there is a projection in this stillet which fits into a semicircular groove in the needle. And in this way, stillet can be locked in the needle. And now this is ready for use. This is a bone marrow aspiration needle. A bone marrow aspiration needle also has a well fitting stillet. It also has a locking mechanism wherein there is a projection which fits into a groove. And once it is locked, it is ready for use. In this particular bone marrow aspiration needle, you can see this. This is the guard and you can fix the guard at a particular point on the needle and it can be fixed by tightening the screw. This prevents the needle from entering any further than we want. A bone marrow biopsy needle can be easily differentiated from a bone marrow aspiration needle 
by a stout handle and a thick strong needle there are two kinds of bone marrow aspiration needle one is the salas needle the other one is the klimas needle we will see the difference between these two needles the two types of trifine biopsy needles are the jamshedi's needle and the turkles or a shocker nodding needle indications for a bone marrow aspiration are infections like chronic malaria and kala azar lysosomal storage disorders like gauchers and neiman pick's disease it needs to be done in unexplained anemia of megaloblastic or dimorphic type and even in iron deficiency anemias for knowing the iron stores it needs to be done in thrombocytopenia and even in thrombocytosis which is unexplained in pancytopenia leukopenia malignancy and in pyrexia of unknown origin the sites for bone marrow aspiration and biopsy are the first piece of the body of sternum the posterior iliac crest the lumbar spinous process and in children less than 2 years of age the medial aspect of the upper end of the tibia the causes of failure of bone marrow aspiration are improper technique needle block by skin or subcutaneous tissue osteopetrosis ignogenic myeloid metaplasia or myelofibrosis densely packed marrow of acute leukemia resisting aspiration the risks of bone marrow aspiration are excessive bleeding especially in patients with low platelet count infection long lasting discomfort at the biopsy site penetration of the breast bone during sternal aspirations and complications related to sedation This is a klimas needle where the guard is spirally threaded onto the needle and this is a salas needle where there is a lateral screw guard Compared to a bone marrow aspiration, a bone marrow biopsy involves removal of segment of bone cortex with the attached intact marrow. The indications for a bone marrow biopsy are myelosclerosis, malignant lymphoma, aplastic anemia, non-reactive tuberculosis and other disseminated granulomas and metastatic carcinomas. The relative advantage of a bone marrow biopsy over an aspiration is that in a biopsy what we see is histology rather than a cytology so the cells can be studied in true proportion to each other a biopsy avoid mi avoids mixture of peripheral cells and in a biopsy you can see cells without smearing or distortion a disadvantage of a biopsy over aspiration is that it takes a very long processing time These are all examples of a bone marrow biopsy needle which can be differentiated from the aspiration needles by a strong thick needle and a large handle. A plural biopsy needle can be easily identified by a notch at the distal end of the needle. This is the Abraham's needle. and this is the copes needle this is an uncuffed endotracheal tube because there is no cuff at the tube end this is the connector of the endotracheal tube this connector connects to the tube like this the line that you see here This is a radio opaque line which helps us see the position of the tube 
on an X-ray. This is the angled tip of the endotracheal tube and this side hole is known as the Murphy's eye. In this position, you can see the connector and the depth markings which indicate the length of the endotracheal tube that is inserted. These are cuffed endotracheal tubes and you can see the cuff here. Now the cuff can be inflated using a syringe. The syringe can be connected at this point which has a one-way springed valve. This is the pilot balloon and through the inflating tube the pressured air is pushed into this cuff. This is a Foley's urinary catheter. This end is inserted aseptically into the patient. Uh, this is the balloon port which is used to inflate the balloon here and this is urine drainage port. The balloon port has a valve which opens only when a syringe is connected to it and a syringe filled with distilled water is used to fill the balloon like this. Now when the Foley's is to be removed, the syringe can be used to remove the distilled water and the Foley's can then be easily pulled out. The urine collection bag is connected to this urine drainage port like this. This is the urinary collection bag. There are markings on the bag which indicate the amount of urine that has been collected. The urine collection bag has a tube and this end of the tube is connected to the Foley's catheter. This opening in the urine collection bag is to be kept closed and it is to be opened while emptying the bag by tilting like this. This is a true cut biopsy needle. It has two parts. It has a central needle and an outer sheath. The needle has a slot into which the specimen fits in and the outer sheath you acts as a cutter. In a biopsy, the first step is to enter the needle in a closed position. Now keeping the outer sheath stable, the inner needle is pushed in. The soft tissue will fit into the slot of the needle at this point. Now keeping the needle stable, the outer sheath is pushed. Now finally, the needle is taken out in this very closed position. Now you can take out the biopsy specimen from the slot using a needle tip. A true cut biopsy gun has simplified the process. It does all these steps simply on pressing a button. In an unconscious patient, the soft tissue of the pharynx can collapse and occlude the airway. The Goodell's airway is used in unconscious patients to maintain the oropharyngeal pathway. This is a catheter used for intravenous and sometimes intra-arterial catheterizations. It is, it is held this way for cannulation. It consists of an inner needle and an outer plastic catheter. This is an injection port which has a one-way valve. So the drug can be pushed into it but it will not come out on its own. This is the cover which is used to cover this port. To give an injection you have to open this port and connect a syringe to this and push in the drug. Once inserted, this end that is the needle is removed and this plastic catheter remains inside the patient. And this cap is then used to keep it close. 
you can also use a syringe to give drugs to this port which does not have a valve this is a scalp vein set these are two different sizes of infant feeding tubes the feeding is given through this end of the feeding tube it has a cover which can be closed once the feed has been given this is the radio opaque line on the infant feeding tube that helps us identify the position of the infant feeding tube on an x-ray this another infant feeding tube of a smaller size also has this radio opaque line the tips of these infant feeding tubes are rounded this is riles feeding tube and this also in this end has a cover there is a radio opaque line and the tip is rounded this is a suction catheter as you can see there is no cap on this end of the suction catheter as it is there in a feeding tube there is a opening on the side while doing suction this opening is to be closed you, it can also be closed with a thumb while doing a suction there is no radio opaque line on a suction catheter <clears throat> the tip of the suction catheter has an opening and it is not rounded like in a feeding tube now if we compare a suction catheter with an infant feeding tube you will see that the infant feeding tube has on this end has a cap while a suction ca catheter will not a suction catheter will have a opening on the side which is not there in an infant feeding tube an infant feeding tube has a radio opaque line which is not there on a suction catheter and now if we compare the tips the suction catheter has a tip which has an opening while in an infant feeding tube there is no opening at the tip and it is rounded this is a mucus extractor it has two tubings this blue end is connected to the suction machine and if it is not available then it can be used for mouth suction the other end is to be inserted into the patient while doing suction with the mucus extractor the chamber has to be kept erect the cap that you see at the bottom of the chamber can be used to recap the chamber after the sampling is finished to transfer the sample to the laboratory this is a blood transfusion set this is the piercing spike this red cover is the air vent this is the filter this controls the rate of blood flow and this end is connected to the patient's catheter this is an intravenous transfusion set it has a piercing spike it has an air vent but it does not have the filter as it is there in a blood transfusion set this is the flow control and this end is connected to the patient catheter This is a chest drainage bag which is used for draining pleural effusions. This is very similar to a uro bag and very commonly confused to be the uro bag. It has a tube one end of which is connected to the chest tube. It has an opening here which is used to drain the fluid. If we compare a chest drainage bag with a uro bag One difference is that the tube that you see in a uro bag will not go till the bottom but in a chest drainage bag the tube goes till the bottom this is needed to create a water seal which is needed in a chest drainage bag and this tube will not be going till the bottom in a uro bag otherwise both of them have a tube both of them have a drainage port so uh, i hope at the end of this video you will not just be able to correctly identify the instruments you will be able to differentiate one instrument from another you will be able to tell the indications contraindications of using these particular instruments thanks for watching